Hey, friend, Chris here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. I don't know if you saw, but just the other day, Apple dropped the latest update to Logic Pro in the App Store, which is 10.7.3. And this is a double point or maintenance update. This is typically just bug fixes, little workflow enhancements, but not necessarily huge new features. However, if you're getting into spatial mixing in Logic Pro, I would say not only is 10.7.3 huge, I would say it is critical to your spatial mixing efforts. And that is because for the first time since the introduction of spatial mixing to Logic Pro, you can now test drive your mixes as you're working on them through compatible Apple hardware that supports spatial audio playback. So things like the AirPod Pros, the AirPod Maxes, the built-in speakers in newer Macs and MacBooks, you can test drive your mixes on these devices on the consumer end before you upload it to Apple Music so everyone else can hear it. This is humongous. Also, this includes dynamic head tracking. Also, you can listen to your spatial mix as you're working on it through Apple's own proprietary binaural renderer. So when you're listening with headphones, not only do you have the Dolby renderer that came with 10.7, you have Apple's own renderer, so you can get a sense, a real sense of how your mix is gonna sound on Apple Music, which uses its own system for playback. Again, huge. On top of that, we have optimizations for Logic Pro on Apple Silicon Macs. We have bug fixes and workflow enhancements and so much going on. Before we dig into all of this, I just want to point out, as with every update, please, please, please back up your version of Logic Pro before you update. And with this update, with some of these spatial audio features we'll dig into, you will have to update to the most recent Mac OS of 12.3. You know, for this update, for all of the stuff in this update, all you need is Big Sur 11.5 or above. But for the spatial audio stuff, you need 12.3. So back up your Mac as well. Use Time Machine with an external drive. Back up your Mac. So you're just protected in that area as well. Okay, let's dig into the release notes real quick. Just want to point out a couple of things. Again, Logic Pro is continually optimized for Apple Silicon Macs. And this is in anticipation at this moment for the new Mac Studio that's coming out. But this is fell across the line. I mean, I have an M1 Mac Mini, the first gen of Apple Silicon Max, and Logic Pro feels snappier, faster, a little smoother. So you feel it regardless of what Apple Silicon Mac you own. Also, there's an interesting update specifically for Apple Silicon Max where if you load a plugin in Logic Pro and if that plugin crashes, no longer does it crash Logic Pro as a whole. Instead, just the plugin crashes, Logic Pro stays open. And then Logic will ask you, hey, do you want me to recover this plugin, meaning try to load it again, or just to quit? That's amazing. That saves so much hassle. And now the plugins are kind of living in their own sandbox that won't crash everything else. And of course, we have the spatial audio features and all the bug fixes and enhancements that you can read through to check out. But I really just want to hone in on the spatial audio updates or spatial mixing updates because this is huge. Of course, the introduction of 10.7 introduced spatial mixing for all of us Logic users at no extra cost. Basically, Dolby's system, the Atmos system, is built in, integrated native in Logic Pro, and all you need to do is flip a switch, essentially, to switch your project from stereo to spatial mixing. And that's located right under the Mix tab, right at the top. You can click on Dolby Atmos, and right here, you will see an option for spatial audio, and in the dropdown, you can switch it from off to Dolby Atmos. And once you do that, Logic Pro takes care of all the rest. It takes care of the routing of all your tracks. It takes care of switching all of the panning and outputs to surround or 3D objects. And then you have the Atmos plugin on the master output. And then you can export an ADM BWF file for distribution. It's amazing. All of this stuff is just under the hood. And if you're one of the folks who have gotten into spatial mixing since 10.7, that is amazing and I applaud you. Maybe you've run into some obstacles though in your journey of spatial mixing. namely that Logic didn't provide any sort of way for you to export your spatial mix to a format that you could play on a spatial audio device like your iPhone to your AirPods or the built-in speakers on your Mac or anywhere else. And that's a huge, huge problem, right? You got to be able to test drive your mixes on other playback systems so you have the confidence to distribute it to Apple Music. You needed what was an export to MP4 option. Logic doesn't provide it. Now, Logic provides different monitoring format options right in the dropdown. So you don't export a new file. Instead, you connect your AirPods or your built-in Mac speakers via the Logic Pro Preferences audio 
preferences, and you set the output device to the appropriate device, and then you select from the monitoring format the appropriate option for your device. So as you can see, we have multiple binaural options now and a separate option altogether, and then all the speaker options for a more professional studio environment or classic studio environment. We have the Dolby renderer, which is the exact same renderer that was released with 10.7. It's just instead of binaural renderer, it's called the Dolby renderer now. We now have Apple renderer, which is a much closer approximation to what Apple Music uses when playing back spatial audio tracks in the app. This is amazing. So now you have two renderers to play back to back while you're listening with headphones to get a better sense of how your mix is going to perform in these different environments. But you also have Apple Renderer with head tracking. It's grayed out because I don't have any AirPods connected. But this covers AirPods, AirPod Maxes, the third gen, you know, AirPods as well with head tracking. So as you move your head around, the music stays put in relation to the device that you're listening from and the renderer for built-in speakers, which means that you now have multiple different playback systems to work from if you don't have a 12-speaker set up in your room or studio. We have one, two, three, and four different options from headphones with a renderer to Apple headphones to Apple speakers. So you can now test drive your spatial mixes in a variety of formats and get a really, you know, a good sense of confidence when you're completing your mixes. But it is worth pointing out that these spatial audio features, though the update only requires Big Sur 11.5 or above, for the Apple renderer, your Mac has to be running at least Mac OS 12.3. For the Apple renderer with head tracking, it has to be Mac OS 12.3 and an Apple Silicon Mac that can play back with head tracking. And then the renderer for built-in speakers, obviously a newer MacBook or Mac that has the speaker set up for spatial audio playback. So I understand and maybe you're not there yet, but this is tremendous to me. I think this is humongous, but I do want to point out before we get into that, let's just take a look at one of these tracks right here in the background vocal stack here. I want to show you a brand new plugin that's available on surround tracks in Logic Pro. So we have this background vocal track. If we click on an empty plugin slot and go to imaging, we now have an option for spatial audio monitoring plugin. And there it is. It's just like the monitoring options right here in the Atmos plugin, but you can also test drive a surround track outside of an Atmos project with these different options for Apple renderer with head tracking and for the built-in speakers. So if you want to like spatialize a stereo track or a surround track, you can just to get a sense of what might happen if it, if Atmos was turned on or spatial audio was turned on in Apple music. Of course, if you're not that interested in spatial mixing, maybe it's not the right time to update for you. Check out the release notes, see if there's anything there that would be worth it to you to update. But otherwise, you know, keep doing you. For those of us who are interested in spatial mixing, this is humongous for a number of reasons. Number one, Apple now provides not one, but two binaural renderers for you to listen to your mixes and work with and work through with headphones. So you have basically two sets of speakers that you can flip between as if you had a monitor controller with two sets of speakers. It's two separate windows that help you maintain a fresh perspective, objective perspective as you're mixing in spatial audio. Number two, you can now listen to your spatial mixes on Apple hardware speakers. So now you can hear your spatial mix in the open air without a 12 speaker or 10 speaker setup that you had to drop a couple G's for. And I've been pricing out multi-speaker setups since the release of 10.7. It is cost prohibitive, extremely prohibitive to get into. It is so expensive. So instead, having these multiple binaural renderers, being able to connect to Apple hardware headphones, the hardware speakers, now I feel like we have many more options for guiding us through the spatial mixing process and having confidence in the results before we upload it to Apple Music. And lastly, the Apple renderer exists to help you have a clear sense of what your mix will sound like on Apple Music because the Apple Music renderer sounds different from that of the Dolby Atmos renderer. So this exists for you to listen through to get a better sense of how will it sound on Apple Music, which by the way, now you can compare your spatial mixing efforts to spatial mixes on Apple Music as a more apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. And if you just go to music, go to preferences and set the playback from Dolby Atmos here. If you have it off, you can set it to automatic or always on, click okay. And then you can navigate to a spatial audio record on Apple Music, pop it open and play it back in spatial audio. 
And you could be listening with your, you know, your headphones and you can flip between this mix, your own mix and see how your results are comparing. And just to point out a third-party option that makes it even easier, I recently purchased an awesome app from plugin developer Sonics called Listen Hub. And Listen Hub allows you to basically route audio in various ways to your studio speakers and interface and headphones. So the system audio is Apple Music, any system no noises or anything. This is on its own tab. And then you can set Logic to be on its own tab as well. And then you can flip between Apple Music and Logic very easily, even level match them in such a way that everything is equal and you're just listening to the sonic comparisons of one Atmos mix or spatial audio mix to another. So not to sell you on a third-party application, I just want to point that out because now you can actually reference spatial mixes. That to me was a huge missing component and really kind of was preventing me from getting started. Now I'm stoked. So I think 10.7.3, though being a maintenance update, is humongous and really has now given me the olive branch I've been waiting for to get started and get digging into spatial mixing with confidence and feeling like I have the tools to get started. So if you're interested in spatial mixing, you got to check out this update. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Why Logic Pro Rules subscribing to the website itself, whylogicperules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.